Baba, Manto Vetabelate. This is everybody's day. This is everybody's day. The journey is interesting. But only the dedicated can can go from that path. The word is drudgery. You know, something that bores you. That's where the average believer is. So when you say, no, it's, it's interesting to follow Jesus. It's not everybody that can relate. Say, prayer is interesting. It starts with your, ability, your, your labors with the spirit to break free from the drawings of the soul. But when your soul is set free in prayer, it be, your, your, your prayer becomes like an Android screen. Tapping icons and realities opening, realities opening, realities opening. It becomes interactive. When you pray that kind of prayer, you can you can write a report. And when I when I ascended, this is what I heard, this is what I saw, this is who I met. And your reports are still captured within the boundaries of scriptures. The average person has not been helped into prayer. Lord, I know you in the word rather, you have a word for me. I will stay with you until you speak to me. And so you read. You are not understand, but you stay. You pray small. You go back. You pray small. We don't know the joy of understanding scriptures. There's a joy in it. That your father is speaking to you and you can understand it. There's a, uh, sometimes I'm in my room. I just rush out. My wife is, she can be doing something, but you will listen to me. I just, I just saw something in scriptures. She just say, hmm. Sometimes I travel and I come into those light bulb moments and I'm telling her, I need to be saying, Shem Bosha, she say, I'm with you. <laughs> because I need to back test it and I found out as I'm telling her, the, the concept is becoming more robust. It's exciting. But the average believer never journeys that far. He does Bible reading in darkness. And so he only opens it when he comes to church. There is a summons to be dedicated. Our pursuit in dedication, in spite of rewards, is not designed to end with things. There is a compensation that God has put in place. And that's what we call rewards. Because dedication will cost you. It will cost resources. It will cost associations. It will take your time. And so there are compensations. But the compensations are not designed to be more glorious than the personality that you will embody or come into fellowship with. Like we learned on Sunday when we stay dedicated. In Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12 to 13, I'll just take these two scriptures and that should be all. In Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12 to 13, should I just open that? I'll walk through a few lines and then we get there. There is a foundation upon which we are encouraged to engage. Remember, I started with the fact that God is summoning us to become more dedicated. A summons from God is an instruction to be obeyed. And so we engage foundationally in dedication because this expression is captured within the context of our obedient service. I know God will give me himself. I know God will give me a house. I know God will give me a car. I know a young man is saying, I know God will give me a wife. The sister is saying, people testify that if, if you dedicatedly follow the Lord, oh, you will marry a fine husband. I know you will get a fine husband. I know you will get good grades. But the foundational reason, why we are called or why we devote ourselves in dedication to God is because it falls within the context 
of our obedient service is an act of obedience. If God says, come closer, what sons do is to come closer. There is a reward for coming closer, but that is not the foundational motivation for coming. True sons understand that obeying their father gladdens his heart. Give me John chapter 14 and let's do from verse 14. If I'm right. John 14, 14. Give me 15. Okay. If ye love me, what did Jesus say? Keep my commandments. So foundationally, it is obedient service. On a second line, the reason why we labor with the Spirit into intensified dedication is because it is a proof of love. A man who loves a young lady will be dedicated to her. I know not many marriages exhibit it, but when you see a young man, believe now, are you already in a relationship? Are you not seeing the ambition? Okay, don't worry. It will come. When you finally meet, see the damsel, Jesus shines light on the damsel. It can be one of your friends even now, but Jesus shines light on the damsel. You can finish your class in school at two. That person will finish at five. And the normal you is that, do they play ball around the hostel? Do you play football? Do you watch football? Okay, you watch. It's good. Are you part of those of us mourning? <laughs> because there's a club that is mourning now. But we'll not go to relegation. I've done the max that just let those down guys, let them keep beating them. And God has been asking. <laughs> so, if you know, you know. But next is it will come out strong. Abina, do you have witnesses? All right. So I have brethren in the house. Maybe after school, you used to go and watch football matches. Suddenly, somebody will see you that even though you closed at two, you stayed back in school. Believe what are you doing? Say, I'm not, go- I'll leave at 5 30. You are basically hanging around to make sure that that damn cell does not walk back alone. Maybe what stimulated that pressure on your time was you will walk me home to do. And so your obedience, you may not see it as obedience, but it's obedience. Every man ultimately serves and worships the object of love. Every man. You don't believe me. You will see that when the damsel comes, even your spending patterns will change. Every time you want to spend money, I know God takes 10%. There are, there are love relationships that take more than 10%. God is fair. <laughs> ah, Oba. <laughs> no, no, am I lying? No, you can't love somebody and not budget for that person. You are a wicked person. Yes. And many times human love takes more than 10% from you. Sometimes it takes 90. <laughs> See, bro, you not eat as you don't worry. Just you just be comfortable. You become obedient as a proof of love. So if God says come, I will come because he has invited me. It will not be recorded against my name that in the day I heard his voice, I had into my heart obedience. Why will I keep obeying? Because he's a slave master? No. Because the shape of obedience is that it stems primarily from a love relationship. I love you. I'll follow you. There is a reward. But pleasing the object of my love is stronger than the notion of a reward. I'm in ministry. Are there rewards? Yes. Good ones, bad ones. And the design is to participate.